In recent years, 3D movies, IMAX screens, and vibrating D-Box seats make cinematic add-ons seem like a 21st century trend. However, attempts to reinvigorate the movie-going experience started decades ago with 3D picture and larger formats. When it comes to attracting audiences at any cost, one man stands as king, William Castle. Through promotional techniques like Emerjo, Percepto, and Illusiono, Castle made a lasting impression on the horror genre. As a teenager, William Castle attended a performance of the 1927 Broadway rendition of Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi. It was after this experience that the future director claims he knew what he wanted to do with his life. Scare the pants off audiences. Castle eventually met Dracula's star after several repeat viewings, and Lugosi recommended the young boy be hired on as assistant stage manager for the touring company. Castle worked in theater throughout the 30s, eventually making his way to Hollywood, where he directed numerous B-movies for Columbia Pictures before making his name in horror. In the late 50s, Castle struck out on his own, starting with 1958's Macabre. In it, a young girl has been buried alive by a mysterious kidnapper, and the girl's father must attempt to rescue her before she runs out of air. As a promotional ploy, the filmmaker issued $1,000 life insurance policies to ticket buyers, claiming they may die of fright. To further the gag, Castle toured with the film from city to city, hiring both nurses and hearses to wait outside the theaters. Castle's promotional techniques paid off. Macabre was a financial success. Castle followed up Macabre with House on Haunted Hill, casting Vincent Price as the film's eccentric millionaire, who offers $10,000 to any of his five guests who can survive the night in his house of terrors. The film has since become a horror classic due to Price's charismatic presence, as well as the film's entertainingly ghoulish thrills. In keeping with his extravagant tactics, Castle advertised the film as the first to feature Emerjo. In order to immerse audiences, Castle equipped theaters with pulley systems that flew plastic skeletons over their heads at appropriate times throughout the movie. For 1959's The Tingler, Castle again cast Vincent Price in the lead role. The film details a scientist's discovery of a parasitic organism named the Tingler that feeds on fear by attaching itself to an individual's spine. The Tingler involved Castle's most elaborate theatrical gimmick yet, which he branded Percepto. For the gimmick, the filmmaker had vibrating motors installed underneath theater seats, which gave audience members a sensational jolt at specific points during the screening. At the film's climax, the Tingler was shown to invade the theater itself, as Vincent Price's voice encouraged viewers to act on the creature's only weakness, screaming. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not panic, but scream, scream for your lives. In 1960, Castle made 13 Ghosts, about a family that inherits a ghost-filled house. The picture was filmed in Castle's Illusiono, using blue filters to film the actors and sets, and red filters for the titular ghosts. By wearing custom red or blue glasses, viewers were given the option of bravely facing the ghosts or hiding them in cowardice. The success of low-budget horror movies by the likes of William Castle influenced Alfred Hitchcock in making 1960's Psycho. Hitchcock was adamant that his film's shocking ending not be spoiled, and famously prohibited any ticket buyers from entering the theaters late. Inspired by Hitchcock, Castle made Homicidal a year later, which similarly features a murderous psychopath and twist ending. In a reversal of Hitchcock's demands, Castle prefaced the film's climax with a fright break, allowing frightened audience members 45 seconds to leave before witnessing the film's terror-filled conclusion. Also in 1961, Castle released Mr. Sardonicus, a period film involving a deformed count and a surgeon forced to cure his affliction. By behaving brutishly and having women tortured, Sardonicus was meant to earn the audience's hatred 
as the film's gimmick involved a so-called punishment poll on whether he should live or die. Despite the illusion of choice, Castle had only filmed one ending, and after a fake tally sequence, events would unfold leading to Sardonicus' death. After Sardonicus, Castle's gimmicks were noticeably toned down, as in the plastic coin giveaway of 1962's Zots, and the international casting hunt of 1963's 13 Frightened Girls. Persuaded away from his ploys by financial backers, Castle instead turned to star power to attract audiences, casting Joan Crawford in both 1964's Straight Jacket and 1965's I Saw What You Did. Castle continued to make films until his death in 1977. However, his most memorable work was made with the desire to involve audiences in movie magic, creating unique experiences for everyone who bought a ticket. For this, he will always be remembered as the King of Gimmicks. If you're interested in the films of William Castle, I recommend starting with House on Haunted Hill and The Tingler. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos.